Hello and welcome again. Last time we talked about this set uh, ZM, which is the collection of all the uh, integers from 0 to the number minus 1, M minus 1. And basically what they are is they are all the remainders, they're all possible remainders that you could have if you divided by M any, any integer. So I have, an, I have a natural number I define as ZM like this. Now there is another important thing we have to talk about and it also has to do with uh, this uh, collection here which is a function. Now remember last time we talked about addition and multiplication within this set. And it was addition taken uh, remainder modulo m. Now we're going to talk about another concept but for that we need to define something first. So the thing we're going to talk about is the following thing. So. We're going to say, if you take two numbers or two integers here, so that's the, the notation here, A and B are elements of Z, which is just integers. We're going to say that those are relatively prime, and this is the important part here. We are defining uh, this concept, relatively prime. So we say that those two numbers are relatively prime if the greatest common divisor between them is equal to 1. Now, being relatively prime depends on both numbers. So, for example, one number A could be relatively, relatively prime with uh, B, but maybe not with some other number. So, this concept here is uh, a concept that depends on the pair, not on one number itself. So, being relatively prime uh, just means that, that when you take the, com the greatest common divisor between the two numbers, you just get one. Basically, what it says is A and B don't have any common factors. That's basically what it means because the only divisor, common divisor, will be 1. So relatively prime, you can think about it as having no common factors. So I have a couple of examples here. Now I have that the GCD between 2 and 15 is 1. You can easily check that because, of course, the largest divisor between 2 and 15 is only 1. So we say then that 2 and 15 are relatively prime. Similar for this one, uh, 5 and 32. These two numbers don't have any common factors, so the GCD will be 1. And so for that reason, they are relatively prime. So this is a concept we're going to use later, and it's important we're going to look at this set here. Now, keeping that concept in mind, we're going to define a function which is actually very important for the next uh, symmetric uh, algorithm, which is the RSA. And this is called the phi function. So with this uh, Greek letter here, phi, that's the phi letter of the alphabet. So we're going to define a function. Basically, it's going to take an input, which is a natural number, and it's going to give me an output, which is also a natural number. So it's a function, takes as input natural number, and it gives me a natural number. And this is the way the function is defined. The function is, is defined like this. When I apply the function, or when I have an input m, and my output will be the following. It's going to be all the elements that are in ZM. So that's why this set was important. All the elements that are in ZM, which is all the numbers from 0 to M minus 1, or all possible uh, remainders when divided by M. All the elements that are there that are relatively prime with M itself. So that would be V of M. V of M are all the numbers from 0 to M minus 1 that are relatively prime with the number m itself. Now, if this looks complicated now, uh, you will get used to it uh, because we're going to use it later. That's actually a very important part of the RSA algorithm, this uh, function phi, which is the number of uh, elements that are relatively prime with m that are in this set here. So let's see a couple of examples. So let's say I want to compute uh, phi of 6. So what should I do? To compute that, I need to know in this set ZM, what are the numbers that are relatively prime with 6? So let's talk about what this uh, the set uh, Z6 is. So it's all the numbers to start, starting from 0. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And you remember, just stop 1 less than the number that is here, so through 5. Now, I have to make a list of the ones that are relatively prime with 6. Okay, I'm going to have to go ahead and delete this to have more space here. So, what is the GCD? So, let's start with all the numbers. So, you're going to make a list here. So, we're going to start, let's say, with 0. So, what is the GCD, or the rest common divisor, 
between 0 and 6. And if this gives me 1, then 0 will be one of those relatively prime numbers. Remember, this this here is a num is the number of v of c is 6 is the number of elements in here that are relatively prime with 6. Now, the GCD between uh, 0 and 6 is actually 6. And think about why is that true? Because the greatest common divisor is the largest divisor of both. Because this is already a 0. Every time you have a 0 as one of the components here of the GCD, the other number that is not 0, that's going to be the greatest common divisor. Because this 6, of course, divides as 0. And 6 divides as 6. And it's the largest one. So 0 and 6 are not relatively prime. Now, how about, let's look at the other one, 1. So the next one will be 1. So I have to go through all the list and check if the GCD is 1. And so I count it. So let's see the GCD between 1 and 6. And you can easily check that this is a 1. So this is one of the numbers that I'm going to count. I'm going to mark down that with asterisk. So I'm going to count that one. Now, how about GCD between 2 and 6, which is the next number that I have in my collection, this number here that I'm marking down here, that number 2 there. Now, that number, the GCD between 2 and 6, of course, is not equal to 1. It is actually equal to 2. So that doesn't, that is not something that I have to count. Now, the next one, let's see, uh, GCD between uh, 3 and 6, well, the GCD between 3 and 6 is not equal to 1. It's actually equal to 3, so I don't have to count it. Let's keep going. So let's see GCD between 4 and 6. Now, the GCD between 4 and 6, if you think about that, that should be a 2. So that means they are not relatively prime. Then finally, I have the very last one, which I'm going to uh, write down here in this column. So the GCD between 5 and 6. And in this case, the GCD between these two numbers is equal to 1. So I'm going to count that. So I'm going to count that one as one of the numbers that are relatively prime here. So what are the numbers that are relatively prime with 6? In this collection, I have only two numbers. That's the 1 I'm marking down with here with the green color, and then 5. So what is this number phi of 6? Phi of 6 is the number of numbers that are here in this collection that are relatively prime with 6, which in this case is only two of them, so phi of six would actually be uh, two. So that would be the the uh, the example there. So phi of six would be two. Now I wanted to do another example here. Um, so let me see here. Let's do another example. Let me start with a blank page. So let's say I have phi of seven. Now let's suppose I want to compute that. So to compute that, I have to look at z seven. And how elements, how many elements are there? So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I have to check all of them. Now, let's see. So I'm, I'm not going to actually check all of them. But, and the reason is because I'm going to explain in a second why. Now, the GCD, the GCD between 0 and 7, because remember, the phi of 6 is the number of numbers that are here in this collection that are relatively prime with 7. Uh, in this case, will be, of course, 7. Now, the GCD between 1 and 7 will be 1. So I have to count that one as one of my uh, numbers. Now, every time I do that, so I'm going to put this in my collection. There's going to be a 1. Now, I'm not going to compute those in detail here because we, we, you can see what's going to happen. What is the GCD between 2 and 7? Is it 1 again? because there are no common factors between 2 and 7, except for 1. 3 is also relatively prime to 7, because there are no common factors between 3 and 7. The same is going to happen with 4. The same is going to happen with 5. And the same is going to happen with 6. Now, the reason that is happening is actually because 7 is a very special number. 7 is a prime number. So whenever you have a prime number, all the numbers that go from 1 through the last number, all those numbers will be relatively, relatively prime with the prime number. So I don't have to actually go ahead and make the list here. So you can actually double check that all of that will give you one. So the GCD, the last one between six and seven will give you one and all of those will give you one. So in this case, uh, how many do I have here? So in this case, I'll have, if you count how many are relatively prime from this collection, 
I have exactly 6 from 1 through 6. So phi of 7 is equal to 6. And so that's how the computation is. Now, you can imagine how hard this would be if I have to compute, for example, a uh, phi of, let's say, 100. So if I had to compute phi of 100, if this 7 were 100, then I'll have to be doing this for 0 to 99, and I have to check each one of them. You can see there that that's not very efficient. It's actually very uh, not the way that you should want to do something like this, this computation in this way, like a brute, brute force computation. Now, fortunately, there is a better way to do this. There is a much better way to compute phi of any number, any natural number, and that way is going to use the, uh, the factorization of this number. So what I'm going to show you in the next video is actually a faster way, uh, in a sense, a, fa a little bit faster, assuming that we know the factorization of this number here, a faster way to know the phi of any natural number, assuming that we know the factorization of that number. So I'm going to stop the video now, and I will show you in the next video how to compute phi of m when we know the factorization of m. So I'll see you in the next video.